Hello everyone. In this video, we'll see how to solve problems under this uh, Carl Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. In the previous video, I have explained what is correlation, uh, different types of correlation and for what type of variables we will use uh, Pearson's uh, product moment correlation coefficient. If you have not watched, link to the previous video is mentioned in the description below this video. You can uh, watch it. This coefficient is also called as Pearson's R uh, product moment correlation coefficient. This is used for measuring the relation between quantitative variables. What are quantitative variables and qualitative variables have been explained in the pre previous video as well. So you can uh, just have a look at it. Quantitative variables are those that can be measured properly and uh, we are going to use this uh, procedure for measuring the relationship between the, those uh, quantitative type of variables. Now I had given in the previous video two set of formula. Pearson's co product moment correlation coefficient is denoted using the letter R. We can also say it as Rxy. The formula for calculating Pearson's coefficient is covariance between x comma y divided by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y. In many textbooks you will see the final formula which is a bigger one and it might be difficult for certain students to remember. So I would like to keep the formula simple and use the terminologies which we already know. So standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. So we already know what is the formula to calculate standard deviation of a given variable. We have seen it in the previous videos. Now I have used the same things here in order to make it easier to remember the formula. So here I had given two set of formula. The first one is without deviations and the other set is with the deviations. We will use formulas for each of these three components which does not use deviations. So covariance between x comma y is we are going to multiply given x and y values and add all of them divided by n minus product of mean of x and mean of y. This is covariance xy formula. Standard deviation of x is sum of x square values divided by n minus mean square. Root of this standard deviation of y is going to be similar to the previous formula sum of y square by n minus mean of y square. So this is without deviations and if we are using deviations we will be using deviations when we have very big values given and uh, squaring all of them and handling it, it becomes too big numbers to handle. In such case we will use deviations. If it is not mentioned you can use whichever method uh, is convenient to you. So with the deviations covariance x comma y is equal to sum of product of x deviation and y deviation divided by n and standard deviation of x is sum of squares of deviations. We need to find x deviations square it and then divide by n and this root of this we need to find. So similarly standard deviation of y is sum of squares of y deviations by n and root of this. These are the two set of formula you can use any one uh, definitely in a given question they will never mention to use formula with deviations or without deviations that will never be mentioned. So you can decide which uh, set of formula to use based on the values given or if you think you get confused with too many formulas stick to one of the formula anyways any statistics exam will allow the use of calculators. So since you have calculators you can just practice with one set of formula and try to use that formula for all the problems and whichever formula set you use you're going to be getting the same answer. Now we are going to solve one question using both these methods. So you will know uh, the difference between the final answer that you're going to get without deviations and with deviations. This is a problem asked in uh, one of the previous years question papers of IGNO. Here we have discussed bivariate regression, find out Carl Pearson's correlation coefficient between stress and adjustment scores given below. Here this is a theory uh, question which we are not going to cover in this video. We will just try to solve this problem and find out what is Pearson's correlation coefficient. Let us represent this stress scores as x and adjustment scores as y. 
so we will write x and y values we have written values of x and y first we will solve this question using that first set of formula without deviations so since we are not using deviations we need square of x values square of y values and product of x and y let us fill all these values so this is 4 16 25 36 64 121 i have written squares of all this x values now i will write squares of y values 18 square is 324 12 square is 144 this is 100 64 um, 49 and 25 now we will multiply x and y and we write it here so 2 into 18 is 36 4 into 12 is 48 this is 50 48 56 and 55 now we will add all these things because we need the sum of all this sum of x values is 36 this is 30 15 30 so sum of y values is 50 sum of squares of x values is uh, 266 sum of y square values is 706 and sum of products of x and y 293 i suggest you all to pause the video do the calculations and solve it along with me so that you can uh, find out in case you are doing any mistakes now we are ready with all the values now we will use our first set of formula which does not use the deviations so what is covariance of x comma y it is sum of x y values divided by n minus mean of x into mean of y before we proceed further we need the mean of x and y values so average of x is sum of x divided by n which is 36 by 6 values which is equal to 6 and mean of y is sum of y values by n sorry this is not 50 it is 60 so you get 60 by 6 is 10 now we shall use these values in calculation of covariance x comma y so sum of x y values is 293 divided by 6 minus mean of x is 6 and mean of y is 10 you will get minus 11.166 this is covariance x comma y always highlight the intermediate answers now let's find the other two uh, values that is standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y standard deviation of x is sum of x square by n minus mean of x square so sum of x square is 266 by n is 6 minus mean is 6 square this is root of we get 44.33 minus 36 we get 2.886 i will take it as 2.88 this is standard deviation of x again we'll highlight this answer next we'll find standard deviation of y standard deviation of y is root of sum of y square by n minus mean of y square which is sum of y square is 706 divided by 6 minus 10 square we get uh, uh, 176.66 minus 100 that gives you 17.66 we get 4.203 i will take it as 4.2 therefore sy is 4.2 Now we have all the values necessary. Now we will find out what is R. Uh, you have to write it one below the other. First find out mean of X and mean of Y. After that all these things you write it below this mean of X and mean of Y. And uh, in the end you write the formula for R. So R is covariance between X comma Y divided by standard deviation of X into standard deviation of Y. Which is minus 11.2. 166 divided by uh, 2.88 into 4.2 
which gives us 923 0.923 minus because we have a minus symbol here so r is minus 0.923 so i had as i had mentioned in the uh, previous video if we are getting um, negative then it is negative correlation and if it is closer to minus 1 we say that it is a having a high degree of negative correlation so what does this mean uh, your your final statement should be actually the answer for the given question if they just ask you calculate carl pearson's correlation coefficient sometimes they'll ask you find out whether these two variables are related or not in such case you have to write your declaration in the end i would recommend you to make it a habit to write the declaration anyways whatever is a question try to write the declaration interpretation of it now what does this value mean minus 0.923 so it is a negative correlation and almost perfect negative correlation that is uh, this indicates that there is a high degree of negative correlation between stress and adjustment levels so this is what your uh, final interpretation should be it's always better to make it a habit to write this statement in the end so this is calculation of carl pearson's correlation coefficient for the given set of value here we have used the first set of formula which does not have deviations in it now we are going to solve the same question using deviations we'll see what will be the difference in the final answer we get I'm taking the same question again. We will just write down the values of X and Y. Since we are going to use deviations in this, we need to write first X deviations, which is X minus X bar. And then we will write Y deviations, which is Y minus Y bar. Next, we will write squares of these deviations, X minus X bar whole square y minus y bar whole square and we need to multiply these two deviations as well which is x minus x bar into y minus y bar before we proceed further we need to first know what is value of x bar and y bar we already know the totals i am using the same thing so this is 36 and this is 60 so x bar is sum of x values by n which gives you 6 and y bar is sum of y values by n which gives you 10. Now I have to subtract this 6 and 10 from every value of x and y. So I will subtract 6 from each of these values of x. So 2 minus 6 is minus 4, 4 minus 6 is minus 2, 5 minus 6, 6 minus 6, 8 minus 6 and 11 minus 6. This is deviations of x. Next, we'll write y deviations. For this, I need to subtract this y mean, which is 10, from each of these values. So 18 minus 10 is 8, 12 minus 10 is 2, 10 minus 10 is 0, 8 minus 10 is minus 2, 7 minus 10, and 5 minus 10. Now we need to square the deviations. In the previous method, we squared the given values directly. Here we are going to square the deviations that we have written here minus 4 square and now since you are squaring it even if there is a negative number the square of it is going to be positive so minus 4 square uh, 2 square 1 square this is 0 again 2 square 5 square next we shall write squares of y deviations this is 64 4 0 4 9 and 25 and we need sum of these uh, squares and we should also be multiplying deviation of x with deviation of y. So minus 4 and 8 we multiply. It is minus 32, minus 4, this is 0, 0, minus 6, minus 25. Add all this. This is 50 and this is 106. Here we get minus 67. Now we will find each of the components required for Carl Pearson's coefficient calculation. Covariance x comma y is uh, sum of product of the deviations divided by n which is minus 67 by 6 which gives us 11.166 same as the previous calculation. Then we have standard deviation of x which is sum of squares of deviations divided by n and the root. 
this is 50 by 6 whole root we get 2.886 I will take it as 2.88 now standard deviation of y is square root of sum of y deviation squares by n which is 106 by 6 whole root same value we will get 4.203 I will take it as 4.2 now if you observe the values that we have got is completely same minus 11.166 2.88 and 4.2 now we'll substitute these things and find out we are going to get the same answer this is equal to minus 0 0.923 now uh, by using these two methods we are getting exactly same values for each of the components it is because we got a proper value for mean of x and mean of y in certain situations in uh, based on the values suppose this was 35 suppose the uh, sum of all the x values was 35 then 35 by 6 would have been 5.8333 it's a recurring number so you might take x bar as just 5.8 or you might take it as 5.83 or you might even take it as 5.833 depending on what value you have taken for x bar this deviations will also vary because this is the value you are subtracting from x 2 minus 5.8 2 minus 5.83 or 2 minus 5.833 are going to give you slightly different values and those values you are squaring same happens with y deviations also since every value has a small change the overall value that you get the final value that you get might not be completely same as the one if you find it without deviations there will be minor changes but it will not be too much you know like at least the first two digits 0 0.92 is going to be same so if you are getting decimal values in between and if you are approximating you might get 0 0.926 925 something like that but the first two digits after uh, the decimal digit is going to be same so make sure if you are getting decimal values like this take two digits after a decimal point and when you square it when you square the deviations you are going to get four digits after decimal point there you can again uh, you can take only two digits or four digits depending on that there will be a small change in the final solution and it doesn't matter whether you are using with the deviations or without deviations in statistics if the answer is close enough to the actual answer you'll be getting the full marks so make sure that all your intermediate answers are highlighted so x bar y bar covariance of x y standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y and make sure you are highlighting your final answer as well in exam when such questions are evaluated uh, the evaluator is going to look for these values these uh, uh, headings what you have written and they will check the formulas what you have written and the intermediate answers all these values they are not going to verify so always make it a habit to write the formula and then substitute don't directly substitute so always write the formula so they will know which method you are using whether you are using the deviations method or the direct value method and exact formulas that you have used they will know so if the formula is correct and this value has a slight change it doesn't matter you will still be getting the full marks and make sure you are highlighting all the intermediate answers if you have any doubts or clarifications you can comment below the video i'll try to reply as early as possible see you in the next video bye bye